Hello and welcome to the second video looking at using your modeling programs to control visual effects in games. Uh, in the previous video we quickly looked at what information the vertex data was able to transport into your game engine. Now we're going to break down and look at some practical applications of that. So within your game engine, as described previously, the core unit is the triangle. This is what's getting rendered to the screen. All of the triangles that make up your 3D volumes. These triangles consist of three vertexes. Each vertex carries through the list of vertex information that we looked in the previous video. In this example, we're going to be looking at vertex colors and how they are transported into the game engine. So if we look at this quick breakdown, you can see that if we have a triangle where each vertex carries a different color, each pixel or fragment on the surface of that triangle will be interpolated as its distance from those three points. So if you look here, you get the gradient of your three vertex colors. And this is really an important concept to understand because this is really going to underlie pretty much every way we bring in different pieces of data into our game engine. For each fragment, it will pick up and average the information from the three vertexes that surround it. For this example, I've brought and modeled up just a very quick uh, polygon tree from kind of copying that uh, low poly style. So you can see here that we have a low poly tree. And if we go in and take a look at its some of its properties, you'll see that under poly under vert editable poly, you can go in and you can find the specific vertex colors associated with um, your information. And you can see here that we've given it, I've given it a green color and we can look down here and we've given it a, well, kind of a brown color. So if we go into our modifier list and bring up vertex paint, you'll see at the top of this bar three different viewing options. This will allow us to actually see our vertex colors uh, within uh, 3ds Max. So if we click on this button, you can see we can now see our vertex colors. This is the information that's being carried through to our uh, program. And it works in the same way as this. Each vertex will have a different color associated with it and it will bring that information into our program. So if we jump into Unity, we have our vertex colored tree. This is using Unity's new lighting system. So I've really changed nothing about the original shader and the way the lighting system works. If we go into the underlying shader code, so let me just bring this up. The way we've brought this information is, is in our struct input line. Now, this is actually very, if, even if you're not very comfortable with coding, this is very easy to understand. What you want to do is you want to type in your float for color and you want to call it color. Now this capitalized color block here, that is the Unity's code for um, being understanding that that information is supposed to come from the model information, the color, which is what vertex colors are called. So now if we want to use that color to use anything with, that we've brought from the input struct here, we, we type in in dot and then the name here on the left hand side of our colon. So here we have in dot color. So our, initially in our breakdown for a standard shader within Unity, C they've set up to be our color. So I've overridden C by saying C actually equals our in dot color. So that means that our albedo or our color in this context will be C dot RGB. And then that will be our RGB colors from our vertex color. So when you look at that, you have a vertex colored tree. Now the reason why this is a, such an interesting technique is because we can completely delete out of this and save. Oops. <laughs> Okay, now you can see what we've done wrong here is that we've forgotten to call it, tell the program what kind of value it is. So in this context, our color is a float four. There we are. So this is interesting because we have no texture lookup to provide us with us color detail, which means that we're not loading any texture information into memory to prove to present this object and color it, which means that it comes at a much lower cost than it would if we were looking up textures to do that. And you can see here, I've brought in our triangle from our setup scene. 
and it is presenting our vertex colors and you can see how they are applied across that surface. Now for those of you who use Unreal Engine, if we bring up our Unreal Engine version of this project, whoops, sorry. If we bring in our Unreal Engine version, you can see we also have our vertex colored tree. Now this can be a little bit easier to understand if you go into the Unreal uh, editor. So if we look in this, it's quite simple. What we do is we take our vertex color. This is an input data that you can just grab out of your category. And you can drag all four vertex color values, our R, G, B, and A, and we can plug it into our base color. And as a consequence, we will have a vertex colored tree within our game scene. Now, this is a really simple application of some of these properties, but what we're going to do is we're going to begin to think about this information differently. In this context, we're bringing through colors as values of red, green, blue, and alpha. However, the colors red, green, blue, and alpha are just a series of numbers between 0 and 1. And we can begin to use those numbers to specify different properties and different elements of our uh, game objects within our editor program so that we can bring them into game. In our next series of videos, we'll start to look at how we can use that information to create different effects within game that have less to do with color and more to do with visual effects.